Hello, everyone. In this example, I want to talk about the repeat purchase rate. Now, in terms of the calculation, it is very simple. The repeat purchase rate refers to the number of customers who have purchased from you more than once divided by the total number of customers. To take a simple example, let us say that we have 100 customers and 20 of them have made a single purchase, 80 of them have made more than one purchase. So the repeat purchase rate would be 80%. Now this is very important as a metric for businesses because this tells us if the customer after purchasing the first time, are they loyal to the brand and are they sticky to the brand or did they just purchase one time and then we lost the customer or not? Obviously, at a deeper level, we might also want to know the frequency of the purchase. So we might do an RFM analysis there to understand the recency, frequency, and the monetary value. But as a very first metric, we want to look at the RPR because the RPR tells us a very simple number as a percentage. How many customers have purchased from us as a percentage more than once? So we are working with this data set. What we have with us is about 51,000 records. That would be 51290 to be precise. We have the order date, the customer name, and the sales value. If we apply a filter and look at the order date, we have the data for four years from 12 to 15. Then we have the customer and the sales value. The sales value ranges from zero all the way till 22,638. The total sales is 1,264,000 or 1 crore 26,42,000. And if you look at the number of customers that we have, if I count the unique customers that we have, the business has 796 unique customers. And what we want to know is that out of this, how many customers are purchasing more than once? Now, it doesn't seem very difficult, but as a business, usually we would not like to find this for the entire lifetime. We might want to do this for a specific period. So most likely we might want to do this monthly to see that every month, what is the total number of transactions? That is how many unique customers have purchased from us and how many of those customers have purchased more than once. So let us say we are creating a customer acquisition strategy. And obviously there is some money that we're spending on that. So as a swiggy, if you have 10,000 customers who are purchasing from you in a certain month, of course, you are curious to find out how many of them, what percentage purchased more than once. So the first thing I want to do here is to create an option to select the year and to select the month. And let me just change the color here. And the reason we are doing this is because we gave a choice to the user to select the month and the year. So in the year, I'm just creating the dropdown validation and we are giving four values here. So we're giving 2012, 2013, 2014, and then 2015. And here as well, we want to give 12 options. So all the way from one to 12. So for example, if I'm selecting 2012 and January, if you look at the data for 2012 January, we can see that there are 433 transactions and we would like to know what percentage of customers have made a repeat purchase during that particular month? So the first thing I want to do is to find out all the customers in the period. That means out of these 51,000 odd transactions for the entire lifetime of the business, we want to know how many of these records are only for January 2012. Now, if we do it manually, 
you can see that we have 433 records. We can see this from here. The count is 433. But we would also like to see not just the transactions, but also the unique number of customers, isn't it? But we'll come to it in a minute. The first thing I want to do is I want to apply a filter to all my customer names. So that would be from, let me first remove the filter here. All right, so we're applying a filter on the entire customer name list. What do we want to include here? We would like to include the dates, but if you think about it, we would only like to include those dates where the year, where the year is going to be equal to 2012. Let's see what happens. So when we do this, we get a slightly shorter list. Now we're getting 8,998 records. Let's verify that. So if you select 2012, the entire year, you can see that we are getting 8,998 records. What we want to do is to apply another filter, which is for the month as well. That's very simple. I can just take this. And we want to multiply this by, I just want to copy this in a different line. And here we want to say that the month should be equal to F4. Let us see the result. You can see the result is 433, which is exactly what we were looking for. So you notice that every time I change the month, if I make it February, the list changes. If I make it 2030, then the list changes. So we're getting somewhere. So let's stick with January 2012. Now I would like to know the unique customers in this period. That means I simply want to find the unique from this list, which is F8 hash. And that tells us a smaller number, which is 195. That means that out of 433 transactions that have happened in the month of January 2012, how many unique customers have purchased? 195. Now I would like to know the transactions in that period. That means we want to know how many transactions have happened for every single one of these 195 customers. So that's a simple count if we can write count if. We want to look at the range F8 hash and the criteria would be G8 hash. And you see that the sum of all these transactions is 433, which obviously is the total number of transactions. Okay, now we would like to look at the customer name and the transactions. And just to understand the data a little better, I would like to sort the data. So we want to sort by and we would like to sort all our customer names. That would be G8 hash. And we want to sort it by the transaction, which is H8 hash in a descending order, that is minus one. Let's copy the same formula one more time. But here we want to sort transactions by itself. So very clearly you can see that for January 2012, we have Hunter making 12 transactions, Elpida making 10 transactions. And if you go down the list, you can see that there are a lot of them who have made only a single transaction. And that's the area that the business wants to locate, right? We want to make sure that a customer is not just purchasing one time, but more than that. Now, if we do it manually, Right, out of these 433 transactions, if we see how many of them are once, you will notice that we have 97 of them, right? So 97 out of 433. So 97 divided by 433 is 22.4%. That means our repeat purchase rate is 22.4%. Let's do this in a formula as well. So I'll just calculate my RPR. 
let me change the color and my rpr is going to be nothing but we want to count the entire range so that would be count ka hash right and that gives me 195 now we also want to count if in this entire range we would like to count what is the criteria how many of these values are greater than 1 so we will simply say greater than and 1 in fact we can also put it inside the double quote like this that gives us 98 so the only thing left for us to do now is to divide one by the other and we get 50%. So remember what I mentioned earlier which is the total number of transaction would actually not be correct. So we are not simply finding 433 and 95 divided by 433 we are doing if you can see we are doing 98 divided by 195 that means there are 195 unique customers who have purchased in the month of January 2012 and out of that 95 have purchased more than one time hence our repeat purchase rate is 50% let's convert this into a percentage as well so there we go so for example if i'm selecting november 2050 we are getting 74% in fact let's add two decimal places like this so once again quick recap we first found out a filtered data set So from the fifty thousand records, we are only interested in looking at the records that are for this particular month and this particular year. Then we can look at the unique customers. We want to count for each one of these unique customers what is the total number of transactions in that month. Then we sort the data and then finally we divide the values where the transaction is greater than one divided by the total, and that gives us seventy three point nine nine. And the best part is that as you change the month and the year, the RPR changes as well, and this gives us a good opportunity to see how the RPR is changing over time. All right, now we would like to do the very same thing with the pivot table as well. So I am going to select my data, insert pivot table, and we'll insert it in the same worksheet. So we'll just come at the top and insert it here itself. Now, what would we like to see here? I would like to see my customer name. Right. So we get a list of all the unique customers that we have. Then we will keep our sales value. in the values but we don't we are not interested in the total sales we are only interested in the number of transactions so we will summarize as a count now we will go to pivot table analyze and insert slicer but the only problem is that right now there is no choice to select the year and the month so what we want to do first is to bring the order date in the columns what this will do is that it will group the order date in a way that now the order date will be broken down into the year quarter and the month as you can see we have the year quarter and the month how does this help us let me drag everything outside now when we go back to pivot table analyze and slicer i can select the year and the month as well so now you notice we have the year and the month let's also go to the slicer setting and make sure that we can hide the items with no data here as well hide the items with no data perfect let's see what happens now so when i select let's say 2012 january what do you see here if i can just right click and sort large to smallest you can see the same data that we had created before so coming back to 2012 january this is the same data that we have created here and of course after this you can write the same formula that we wrote which is here 
The reason I'm showing this to you with a pivot table is that all of this work, right, is not required because it's much easier in a pivot to arrive at this point. Of course, it's a matter of choice whether you want to use a pivot or a formula. I would always prefer a formula because it gives me much more control over the way I'm running my calculation. But just to complete this example, everyone. I first want to make sure that we don't see the total at the bottom. So in design, we will hide the total. And now we can write the same formula that we wrote before, which is that I would like to see the count if in the entire range, values that are greater than one divided by the total count. As you can see, we're getting the same result, everybody. 50.26% that we were getting here as well. All right, now let's see how to do this in a pivot table using DAX. Now, of course, I'm going to write a DAX measure here. And we can do this in Excel, but I would prefer to do this in Power BI. And hopefully you will understand it better there, but the same formula can be used in Excel as well. So let me open Power BI. And in the meantime, I'll also select my data and then create a new Excel file. And you can see that this is already a table. So I'm going to call it my transaction table, right? And let's save it on the desktop. And let's call it transactions RPR. Perfect, now we can close this file and we will open Power BI. Perfect. Now, what we are doing here is I first want to select my Excel file, which is transactions RPR. We will select the table. We don't want to make any change to the data. So I'm not going to go to transform and go to power query. We can simply load the data set. Now let me try and explain what we're doing here. So first, let me go to the data view and I will create a new table, right? Let's just call it table for now. We don't want to change, we can change the name data as well. Now, what I would like to do here is I would like to summarize, right? Now, summarize is like a group by that we do on SQL. In fact, I have a video explaining the difference between a pivot grouping, a group by on Power Query and a summarize on DAX. So what we're doing on summarize is I'm first selecting, if you look at the arguments, I'm first selecting my table name. We know our table name is called transaction. Next, we want to give the group by column name. So we want to give it a name here. And obviously the table name would be, the column name would be transaction customer name. Okay, after that, we can either give another column that I want to use in the group by, but right now I don't want to do that. So I will use the next argument, which is the name. So I'm just going to call it count. Right? So we call it count. And now it is asking me for the expression. So what we've done so far is I have created a list of all the unique customer names, and I would like to create a column called count where I want to see what I simply want to see the count of my sales values like this. Now let me press enter and you notice the result is like this. So we have Aaron Bergman coming 89 times, right? Now, if I go back to my Excel file, And if we create a pivot table here, just temporarily, customer name and sales, and then we summarize as count, 
Do you see this? R in Bergman 89, R in Hawkins 56. In fact, let me sort the data. So, Mohammed Yedwab is 108. If I go back to Power BI and if I sort it, Mohammed Yedwab is 108. So, we're getting the same result. Essentially, we are recreating what we were doing earlier in the pivot table. Right? Okay. Now, this is great, but obviously, there are a lot of them which are smaller numbers as well. Now, remember, right now, you won't see a number which is one because we are looking at the entire period and we're not just looking at the particular year and the month, right? But what we would like to do here is that I am going to apply a filter here and the filter would be the filter would be on this table that we have created. And what is the filter expression? Very simple. The expression is that my count has to be greater than one. So if you think about it, more or less what we did in the Excel, we are replicating here. Only the syntax is a little different. I will also copy it and then go to DAX formatter so that I can format the code a little better. So we will go to DAX formatter. And I just paste my code here, click on format. And as you can see, it looks a lot better now. Let's come back and paste it here, right? But this is uh, not the end, right? Because we also want to now divide this by the total count, right? So what we're doing is I will just copy the entire thing, right? And we will say that we want to divide this by what? By the total count. This means the second time we don't want to write the filter, we just want to find the total count. Right? Like this. But remember, we just don't want to take the entire table. We want to find the count, right? So we want to find the count rules. In fact, let me show it to you one by one so that you understand it perfectly. So here you notice we are filtering the data to only the ones that are greater than one. In fact, if I make it 100, you notice that only the customers more than 100 are being shown, right? So we want to make it greater than one. And now I want to use count rows. Right. And let me just check this once. Now I will take this and go back to my report view. We will create a measure and I will paste this here, right? Like this. Now, once we press enter and we make a card, I should be able to bring this here and it gives me 796. Now we know that is correct, right? Because that's the number of customers that we have. Now you must be wondering, but why is it not working here? Now, of course, this is a slightly advanced topic, but I will try my best to explain it. When you create a table using DAX, you're creating a table, right? Not a value, but count rows is going to give you a value, right? That's why it says that it's not a valid table expression. So the moment I simply filter it, it works. But this would not have worked if I was doing it in the card here. Here, if you notice, if I simply said filter, it doesn't make sense because it's going to return a table, but I need a single value, right? Hence, we want to write count rows here. Right, everyone? Okay, now all that is left for us to do. So once we go back, let me only keep it as a filter just for your reference, everyone. So 
so count rows right and we get the result here let me just reload it one more time so we will keep a card and keep the number in it 7 out of 96 now if i make a bar chart and i want to keep my order date in it right and let's also keep the data label even though the numbers are very close to each other think what these numbers represent they are representing the total number of unique customers that have purchased from us right or rather it tells us the number of customers that have purchased more than one time from us in this period right so all we need to do now is to do this entire thing one more time so i just call it calculation one right we'll copy it let's go to new measure and let's do it one more time so i'm going to call this calculation two and this time we will not apply our filter right so i'm going to remove this part with a filter everyone so this part is not required and let us see what happens so if i keep the calculated two as well in the same visual You notice this is the result that we are getting you must be wondering but sure the numbers are a little different but it just doesn't look correct let me try to do this at a month level, right so what i'm doing is i want to remove my year and quarter and day it looks a lot better now let's also keep a slicer for the month that we have i'm sorry for the year that we have and Let's try and understand what this is telling us, everyone. Let me just add a border and a shadow to make it look a little cleaner. So let's add a border and a shadow, format painter on this one as well. Okay. Let's go one by one. I'm going to select 2012. And you see what happens? 98 is what? 98 refers to the number of customers purchasing in the month of January 2012 who have purchased more than once. 195 is referring to the total number of customers who have purchased in January one or more times. So there's the result, everyone. All that we need to do now is to write another measure. We will say that our RPR is equal to what? Is equal to calc one divided by calc two. So if you notice, I am going to remove both of these. We will only keep the RPR here. Let's also change that into a percentage. And there you go, 50.26%. Correct yourself, right? If you keep the calc one and the calc two in the tooltip, that will also tell you customers purchasing exactly one time and customers purchasing in that particular month, all the customers, right? Like this. Now, I am going to save this and of course the file will be available, but I would still like to show you how to do the same thing on Excel, even though the formula is going to remain the same. It doesn't hurt for us to see how this works on Excel as well. So I'm going to go back to my Excel file. And first we will ensure our table is called transaction. In this, I am going to insert a pivot table. But while I'm doing that, I will also ensure that I add it to the data model so that I can write that expressions in it. So we click on OK. And now we can go to power pivot. We can go to measures and I can go to new measure. Now here I can say that my RPR is equal to what? 
Now, I'm not going to type the same thing again because we already have done it before. So I'll just copy it from here. So we'll simply say that it is copy and then we paste it here divided by copy calculated to and we paste it, right? Let's check the formula. Everything works perfectly. Click on OK. Let me keep the order date in the rows, right? Um, we want to only see the month level every month. And we also want to have a slicer for the year. And there you go. Let me just make it a percentage. Okay, so if I set it 2012, we get 50.26%. Same thing, what we did in tax, the same formula we can write in Excel as well. The advantage of doing this in tax on Power BI is that most of it is visual. So you can at least go to the table view and then through the data view, create a table and see how it works. Even though we couldn't do it completely, because obviously when you do the count rows, it becomes a measure, but at least the summarize and the filter can be seen. And that can be quite helpful. Perfect. Now let's come to the Power Query bit. So what we want to do here is that I will go to data and this is a table. It's called transaction two, right? So first, after making this into a table, we will send this to Power Query. So we go to data and then we say from table oblique page. So that will open up the Power Query window, which looks like which looks like this, right? Now think about the calculation that we would like to perform. I would like to create two data sets, one with all the customers and one with only the customers who have purchased more than once, right? Now think about how we would do this. The first thing I need is a parameter, obviously, which means that I somehow need to be able to also select the month and the year. So let's try and do that. So I'll close and load. We'll come back to it in a bit. So let me try to close it. I'm facing some problem there. Okay, I do want to keep my changes. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to give two options to the user. So one is for the select here and the other is for the select month everyone, right? These will act as the parameters for the query that we have. Just a small change, make the table in this manner. So we have the select here and the select part. I will change the color here as well. And let's change the font color to black. Okay, now what we would like to do is to convert this into a table. So we'll go to insert table. So I have already created a table. We'll call this the selection, right? And we will send this to Power Query as well. So data and then from table range. And now we come to the Power Query window. Now what we would like to do is to get access to these two separately. So I would like to get the year and the month separately. So I'll create a duplicate query. But that doesn't help you. We want to create a reference. When you do a duplicate, it just duplicates it. But when I refer it, what will happen is I will get equal to selection, basically equal to the previous query name. Now, in curly bracket, we can write zero. And that will give us select year 2012, select month three. Now, out of these two rows, which one do we want? In bracket, we can simply say 
select year and that gives us 2012. I just duplicate it. Let's call this the year and this one. I'm just going to change it to the month and now we get the month. Now these two will act like a filter. So when I go back to transaction 02, first let me convert this into a date. We first want to separate the year and the month. So I will go to add column and we will say date, year, year. One more time, add column, date, month, and then the month. Now the original date is not required, so we can remove it. From the year and the month, we would like to apply the filter. That means we only want 2012 and the month which we have selected. So what I'm going to do is in the year, for the moment I can select anyone, it doesn't matter which one, I'm just selecting 2012. But then I'll go to the formula bar and then rather than writing 2012, we will simply put in the year here like this. And then we do the same thing with the month as well. Let me rename it first to the month. And here we can go and say that there's a filter. And to begin with, we can select any one of these. And we can just replace the one with our parameter, which is the month. And you notice it selects three because that's the value I selected on the Excel value. All right. Now let's call this total count, right? Which means I would like to count the total number for this month and this year. So now we can remove all the other columns except the name. If we will then remove the duplicates and then I'm transform, I can say statistics and count. And that gives me 224. Let's duplicate the query. And now we will say total count for more than one. That means these are the customers who have purchased more than once. Let me cancel the last one, two, three steps. And what we would like to do here is, I would like to do a group by. It's like a count if. So we go to transform and group by, and we want to group the customer name. Let's call the new column customer name count as well. And we want to count the rows. And that gives us the number like this. So if you notice, if I sort it, we get the number like this. Obviously, there are a lot of ones here as well. But remember, we don't want the ones, right? So what we want to do here is, if we can see here that the total count is 224, we are getting 224 here as well. But we don't want to see all of them. We just want to see all of them except one. That means these are the customers who have purchased more than once. The answer is 125. So let us go to transform and count values. And that gives us 125. Now let me go to home and close in. Now see what will happen is that a lot of these tables will be created, but we don't really need them. So I'm going to delete them. So the month we can delete. We don't need it. We don't need the year as well, so we can delete it. And we don't need the selection as well, we can delete that as well. Now we go to data and we go to get data from other sources and blank query. And in the blank query, we will find our RPR. So we will say that this is equal to my total count for greater than one divided by the total count. Press enter. And we get the result. How cool is that? Now we would like to send this result back to Excel, right? So I'm just going to call this RPR and we will say close and load to. And we want to load it on the same sheet. So on the existing worksheet, we just put it, let's say here. And we get the RPR here. So we have first page, right? So let's just verify. So if I say January 2012, I can simply right click and refresh, and it gives me 50.26. If you remember, 
the same result that we were getting here, here, and here as well. So it was quite a long example, everybody, but then we have managed to do quite a lot. We have managed to do this using formulas, using a pivot table, using tax, and using Power Query as well.